this is a good way to conclude my complete video guide to becoming an amateur astronomer on this wonderful evening of stargazing. Hello and welcome to the program, Sula's Big Adventures with me, Sula. This is chapter 18 of my complete video guide to becoming an amateur astronomer. Conclusion. So, you're an amateur astronomer. Now what? No, I have not returned this telescope to my friend Katie, so shh, don't tell her because I'd like to keep it for a while. I started this project of making a video guide to becoming an amateur astronomer over a year ago when I introduced myself and I explained how I became interested in amateur astronomy when I was just eight years old. And over the past year and about three months, I have made videos to help the nascent amateur astronomer get started, learn the night sky, learn some basic uh, astronomy about the ecliptic and declination and right ascension about the sun, the moon, the planets, nebulae, the Milky Way, stargazing tips, a binocular buying guide, a telescope buying guide, uh, setting up your equatorial mount, learning what tools are needed and eyepieces, accessories for your telescope, and the best way to approach amateur astronomy, and even a chapter on entry-level astrophotography. I provided what I felt were practical and useful information that you can use to help you in your journey to becoming an amateur astronomer. So now that you completed all 18 chapters of my video guide, you can now call yourself an amateur astronomer. Many famous and highly qualified amateur astronomers don't have degrees in astronomy or physics or cosmology. I recently learned that David Levy, famous comet hunter and co-discoverer of the famous comet Shoemaker-Levy that slammed into Jupiter in 1994, never got a degree in any of those things. He had a degree in English literature. Uh, also, famous amateur astronomer Terence Dickinson, who passed away in February 2023, and who wrote 14 amateur astronomy books, he only had an honorary degree of science from Queen's University. Likewise, noted amateur astronomer Alan Dyer, as far as I know, has no degree in astronomy, but he's well-known amateur astronomer who frequently contributes to Sky and Telescope magazine and was co-author of the Backyard Astronomer's Guide with Terence Dickinson. Just to name a few people, and now you can call yourself an amateur astronomer, even if you don't have a degree in astronomy or science or astrophysics. All you have to do is watch all 18 chapters of my complete video guide to becoming an amateur astronomer. <laughs> and this will be on the honor system, of course. <laughs> and once you complete the 18 chapters, I'll certify that you have successfully completed the 18 chapters and I'll provide you with a certification certifying that you are now a certified amateur astronomer. And here's the certificate that you will receive signed by me, Sula. So here's the certificate signed by me, Sula. And yes, I still have this telescope, my travel telescope. I may take it to Texas for the total solar eclipse in 2024. We'll see. I haven't been able to use it much because it's been so cloudy, except looking at the sun with this solar filter. But I will certify you as a certified amateur astronomer if you completed all 18 chapters. But if you skip chapter 16 on entry-level astrophotography, I'll still give you the certificate certifying that you are a certified amateur astronomer. <laughs> I only included the chapter on 
astrophotography because astrophotography is a very popular hobby and it's a growing area of amateur astronomy and I felt my guide would not be complete without a chapter covering astrophotography. But throughout this journey I have always tried to emphasize the importance of learning the night sky, honing your observational skills, taking notes and making sketches, taking the time to go to dark sky sites, and observing the night sky in all its glory. My philosophy is that it's important to take the time to observe and enjoy the night sky by observing it. I've always emphasized the thrill and importance of the visual experience of amateur astronomy. I've encouraged all of you to turn off your lights at night and encourage your neighbors to do the same and to join the International Dark Sky Association and even write your legislators and encourage them to adopt dark sky policies for your community. And all those things apply to astrophotography too. Astrophotographers and visual observers alike will prefer dark skies and will benefit from preserving dark skies and promoting an interest in observing the night sky so that politicians and other people will try to preserve the dark skies. So astrophotography has its place in amateur astronomy and it can be a fun and rewarding hobby that's brought great joy to many people. But if you're just not interested in astrophotography and you skip chapter 16, I completely understand. And after all, it's not necessary to know about astrophotography in order to be an amateur astronomer. And I'll still give you your certificate if you completed all the other chapters except for chapter 16 and now have a proficiency in the topics that I covered in my guide to amateur astronomy. And if you did watch chapter 16 and all the other chapters, well then, maybe you'll get a gold star on your certificate. So, if you want your certificate proving your new status as an amateur astronomer, as certified by me, Sula, you'll need to submit your documentation and your request. This is my favorite telescope, by the way, and she's a beast and she's not going anywhere except my driveway on the JMI wheelie bar. I've named her Artemis, by the way. So now that you're a Sula certified amateur astronomer, now what? Where do we go from here? Well, I'll continue to make videos about amateur astronomy and maybe even about astrophotography. We'll see. So don't worry, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going away. You can't get rid of me that easily. <laughs> I'm just concluding my video guide. But what about you? How do you keep engaged as an amateur astronomer? Well, the universe is vast and there are lots of things in it to explore that will keep you busy for a lifetime. And one thing you might consider is to tackle one of the observing programs. I belong to the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada and they have several observing programs and they're for all levels of astronomy and their website is www.rasc.ca. And their most basic observing program is called Explore the Universe, and it's open to all, even if you're not a member. And if you complete the program and turn in your documentation, they'll send you a certificate and a pin. And here's my pin, and here's my certificate. You must document your observations with information on the equipment used, the sky conditions, and you must describe the object you are observing with words and with sketches, though sketches are not required. There are two moon programs, one for binoculars and one for telescopes. This is how strict they are. <laughs> I completed the telescope moon program, but my documentation was rejected because they said I didn't adequately describe the objects I observed on the moon. <laughs> and I restarted the whole thing, but I still haven't uh, completed it, the program again. 
and hence I don't have the certificate or pin for the Observing the Moon program. The Royal Astronomical Society also has a double star program and one uh, called the Finest NGC Objects, among many others. And you can check out their Observing Program list on their website under Observing Programs. The Royal Astronomical Society also offers an imaging certificate for members only. They offer a certificate for taking and submitting at least 15 well-framed, well-focused, high dynamic range photos from their list of suitable objects. The Astronomical League also has many observing programs and you can check their website for which ones and how to apply. Their website is astroleague.org. One of the Astronomical League's observing programs is the Herschel 400, and another one is the Caldwell observing program, just to name a couple. They also have imaging programs and certificates as well for meeting certain imaging requirements. And speaking of imaging, if you're just starting out and would like some direction on targets for imaging, I would recommend the book, 100 Best Targets for Astrophotography. You can make your own observing program too. For example, try to see all the Messier objects or try to complete the Messier Marathon when you try to see all of the Messier objects in a 24 hour period. The possibilities are endless and the more I think about it, the more things I come up with of what you can do. You can come up with your own list of objects you want to see each year or in your lifetime or objects you would like to see better or objects you would like to photograph or sketch or dark sky sites you would like to visit or star parties you'd like to attend or plan a vacation around going to a dark sky site or Set up your telescope on a street corner like John Dobson and offer to allow strangers to look through it. Or invite your neighbors over to look through your telescope. Uh, or take your telescope to your local astronomy club's uh, star parties and share your telescope with people who may have never looked through a telescope before. I have my own personal goals for continuing my pursuit of amateur astronomy and one of those goals is to continue to make these videos and to share my joy for astronomy with anyone who cares to watch and learn about this fantastic hobby of exploring the universe. So I hope I have given you some ideas to keep you engaged in amateur astronomy for a lifetime. And that's it for Sula's complete video guide to becoming an amateur astronomer. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it and I, I hope you got something out of it and learned something from it. And I'll be back soon with more episodes on amateur astronomy. If there's anything you'd like me to make a video about, let me know. I owe a video to one of the viewers who asked me a long time ago to make a video about what you can see in your Dobsonian. And if you're watching, I do apologize for the delay. I had a lot of projects lined up, but that will be coming to a theater near you soon. So I'll see you soon. Until then, get outside and enjoy the night sky. Dark skies forever. Sula, signing off.